Hello! What you're about to see is just one section of my roughly 20 part Gumroad Squirtle Creature tutorial series, say that three times fast, where I modelled and textured this little guy from start to finish. To be honest, this is my favourite thing that I made in all of 2020, so I just really wanted to share a section of it. In this part, I'm first setting up my Mari scene, blocking in some colours and using substance to help with that. If you like what you see, then the Gumroad link is below. If not, then hopefully you still get something out of it by seeing how I first approach an asset when I begin texturing. Cool, let's crack on. So I'm inside Amari now, and obviously I've got all this displacement and stuff that I've already set up inside my project. So I'm just gonna move it down and I'm gonna start thinking about the color. So I've got my channels already set up when I set up this project earlier. So I'm just gonna create a color node, pick a blue that's roughly the skin and just merge that on top and start merging on top the different colors for like the skin, the shell, whatnot I need. And I'm gonna use the UDIM range to mask node as the mask, and then I can just pick the UDIMs that say, for example, the skin is on. I like using backdrop nodes when I'm texturing. Just for example, I'll do a backdrop node for all the skin and all the details I put on top of that. And then I'll do a separate one for the shell and then a separate one for the eyes, which obviously haven't yet touched. But I find that's a really good way to just, especially if you go back to a scene after a while, you open up your Mari scene, it's just so many nodes. So if you've got backdrops, you can help organize it that way. Obviously also naming nodes is really important and it's something I did at the beginning and then forgot to later on. So you can just see here, I'm adding some new merge nodes and connecting up colors for different parts. For example, I've got a brown there for the shell and now I'm gonna presumably do a sort of yellow for the underneath of the shell. Let's have a look, yep, bingo. And I'm kind of, I'm going by the cartoon, but I'm also just going for sort of realistic values as well. You'll notice in the final render, it's not perfectly the same as Squirtle, it's just inspired. It's a bit more muted overall, but just colors that sort of blend together. So since this shell is just the underside, what I'm gonna do is change the selection mode to connected UVs and that'll just select the different UV islands. And I can just select all these bits that need to be this yellow and then I can create a mask out of that. That's one really good thing about having correctly or good laid out UVs is you can select them inside of Mari and just create masks out of them really, really quickly. So everything that's yellow now, I'm just gonna make a new paint node, add that into the mask, make sure it's black to begin with. And then what I can do is right click, go to fill and then fill the selection with white and then I've got a mask for that really really quickly so the underneath is now just yellow and I can do that for the rest of the mesh I don't have to use those unit range to mask and then because I'm using color nodes as well that's the great thing about working procedurally in this way is I can change that color on the fly and I do so many times I start with one blue and then end up with another blue and the shell changes so so much so yeah it's a really really great thing to be working with a more procedural sort of workflow because nothing is destructive. You can change bits right until the last second, which you really will see me doing. So I've just made another black paint node there and I'm connecting it up to the back of the shell. And you'll see once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that using the selection. And then finally these side bits, because Squirtle sort of has this white rim around the back of the shell, then I'm just going to select those and make them this lighter color that I put down. And then in theory, because the yellow of the shell is sat on top of that. Yeah, perfect. I've got it there. I've missed the inside of the shell where the leg is. You might have just seen that, but I know I fixed that later on. So that's some base colors kind of blocked in quite simply there. And now I can just play around using the concept, using what I like, just try and get, for example, the edge of the shell, I wasn't loving what the anime, the colors from that, it just wasn't looking great. Uh, so I was just trying to find a value that worked. And in the end, I think I went with one that was more like the hue on the back of the shell. So it's kind of a transition from a darker to a lighter tone of the same hue. And just playing around with the front as well, seeing what works. It's great, I really like this. It's sort of like concepting, but experimenting. I really, really like this. And you can also get different variants out as well. So in the final render, which I'm currently working on, which should be done by the time this series releases, I wanna do the Squirtle Squad with the five Squirtles. So what I did is I basically exported five different variations or three different variations and put it on five different Squirtles. So one was slightly darker blue, one was slightly lighter blue, and all I had to do was just change the sliders and I got some really quick variations, uh, which was great, yeah. 
just having a look at how they did it on Detective Pikachu. <laughs> don't really like that blue they've got there. It's a bit too muted. I don't know why. It just makes it look a bit like dead. Anyway, so when that's kind of blocked in, I've got some basic colors on. What I need to do is I need to start baking my maps. So I don't use Substance this project. I was using Mari, but Substance is amazing for its baking. So I want to get the curvature. I want to get the occlusion. I want to get the normal details all from my high poly onto my low poly mesh. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to do that for every single different subtool inside of ZBrush. I just exported the high poly and the low poly, and then I'm going to bake them. The reason I did it separately is so that different pieces of geo don't include each other. For example, the top of the arms aren't occluded by the shell if they intersect, which I know they do. And also it's just easy for my computer to handle because it's a lot of millions of polygons, the entire thing. So you'll see, I'm just gonna do it on the head here. I'm gonna do it on all the different pieces, just export them as well. I've got my own preset that I exported. And then inside of Mari, I can just import these and I've got these like tertiary maps that I can then start texturing with, especially curvature. It's so useful for things like this because you want your textures to line up with your sculpted detail. Kind of like how I was saying in the last video, I was sculpting on top of the projections because I wanted them to complement each other. You want the textures to complement the form. So by having curvature, by having ambient occlusion, you can make those into masks and use that to drive your textures somewhat. And yeah, it just, it, it's really, really cool. And it just, it makes the sculpt pop and I, cannot recommend it enough, especially when it comes to like skin and creatures and stuff like that, but also hard surface. It's really useful as everyone who knows with substance, substance is really good with hard surface. I don't like painting inside a substance because I just don't think its tools are great enough for organic creatures. I've been proven wrong by seeing some amazing work with substance, but uh, yeah, it's not for me. So I always do it inside of Mari, but I will always export my maps from substance because it's amni occlusion, it's whatever else is so much better than ZBrush and their crappy versions. So yeah, just exporting it, 4K, TIFFs, each of the UDIMs, you can see that I've got it out, I've got all my maps that I need, and then onto the next subtool. And I'm gonna not talk over this because there's too much, I've got nothing to say and there's a lot of objects to go through. So when that's all done, I'm just gonna make a backdrop down at the bottom and I can put all my tertiary maps in, my bakes, keep calling them tertiary maps, let's just call them bakes. Anyway, so I'll just put substance in their own little backdrop and I'll just make loads of paint notes for them, making sure they're the right bit depth and the size that I exported from substance and just naming them correctly as well. And then I can just import them one at a time into those paint nodes and then they're ready there to use for masks, use for whatever else I need and also ready to also export if I wanna use, for example, the normal map in a channel. I can export it straight out. So I've got to do the arms, as you can see here. So I'm gonna have to go back and redo those, but apart from that, let's take a look at these maps. So that's a world space normal, not super useful, but it's just nice to have. My A is looking pretty good there, but the curvature, this is the one. I remember seeing this and I've never seen a curvature map look so nice. I was just really blown away with the result. Um, I think they might have updated the curvature baking inside of Substance, but that just looked godly to me. And I was like, hell yeah, Substance, what, how have you managed that? You made my textures look amazing. Um, I think before it didn't used to take the high poly into account for the curvature. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, I don't know. But anyway, the curvature looked really good. So I'm importing the arm textures here and then I'm good to go. I also can't forget my ZBrush exports. We've got the normal and the displacement map. So let's get those in. I don't really need the normal map, but it's just a force of habit by this point that I just always do it. But I'll bring it in for the sake of it. And I've also got some masks that I could have, I tried exporting as well, but didn't love them. Uh, this was a little bit more fiddly because ZBrush is exporting the name conventions is shit. For some reason, it puts the subtool name at the start of the multi-map exporter texture name. So I had to import them one UDIM at a time for the ZDisp and the curvature as well that I exported, which just looked like crap, but I thought I'd try it, and the normal. So I have to go every single sub tool, import them separately into the same paint node, and then finally they sort of all come in together. But yeah, that's just because of ZBrush's naming convention. So yeah, when all of these maps are in, I can really just start texturing because I sort of want to use them, uh, but I'm gonna need one final thing, and that's gonna be textures. Can't texture without textures. I mean, you can, but it will look very flat. So I have my own texture library. I started this way too late in the game. Anytime I download a texture, sometimes I just delete them afterwards. But now I've started sorting them into categories and folders, and it just means that they're always there. So I can go through, find what I need. So I'm just loading up the reference. I've got my pure ref on the side here, and I'm just finding like noises, dirt, whatever that I can use and just bring into the image manager inside of Mari. So I can just drag them in there. 
you can see here I've got substance procedurals. I baked those out of substance. Substances procedurals are second to none. The extension pack inside of Mari does have some. I haven't really delved into it that much. I always just kind of rely on the substance ones and textures from textures.com. So if there's another tip apart from ref is king from these videos, a texture library is so bloody useful and you will not regret it. If you ever have an image that you've used on a project, just save it into another folder, categorize it, and you'll be so thankful in the future. So if you've ever used Substance before and used its smart masks, which give you some amazing edge detection and kind of edge wear, all it's doing is it's turning its curvature bakes into the edges and the crevices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that myself just using a levels node. So on the curvature map, anything that's dark or less than 0.5 gray is sort of crevices and anything that is white is the edges. So by just using a levels node, I can really bring out all the cracks in between the scales and I can also bring out the edges of those scales as you're seeing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up two levels nodes, one that does the edges and one that does the crevices. So I've got some nice edge detection there and I've cranked it so I'm not getting too much because I don't want everything to be in that map. So now I'm gonna try and work on the crevices. So I'm just gonna pop down another levels node coming out of the curvature map that I baked and I'm gonna try and get all those dark areas into a mask as well. Because they're black, obviously when I start isolating them, everything else is gonna be white, which is fine but that's not really gonna work for me because that's not a mask then, I'm trying to mask off those crevices. So all I need to do afterwards is just invert that so that the crevices are actually white rather than black. And then that's giving me them just as a mask rather than everything else. So here I am just popping down an invert when I've got something I'm quite happy with. So now I've got a crevice map and I've got an edge map. And these I'm gonna use so much going forward for texturing. If you've watched any of the Lion Cat series that I've already done, then you'll know that I use that a lot. But for this, it really is gonna be instrumental to help me kind of isolate those areas. So now I'm popping down a radio transmitter, which I hopefully would have already explained. And it's an extension pack node that I use all the time. If you don't have the extension pack though, all you need to do is just hook that up wherever you need it. But radio transmitter just means that I don't have all these spaghetti junction of nodes kind of going everywhere. So I was just hooking that up, ready to use it wherever I want this mask to be. And now I'm just gonna start backdropping the areas of the colors that I've already set up. So I wanna kind of backdrop the shell, get all the skin areas together. And then that way I can just start building up those sections separately. And I just find that kind of housekeeping like this early on really, really helps. And it just means I can move around lots of nodes together and I just can zoom out and quickly find bits that I need to change if I wanna change something on the fly. So here I'm just using a radio node to pick that mask up. So now, Basically, I can access that node wherever I want using a radio node, and it means I just don't have to drag that off every single time I wanna use it. So that's the crevices mask there, and I'm gonna start using that to isolate some color on the skin. So I'm just looking at some ref there to see what I'm trying to recreate. And to begin with, I'm just gonna pop down a base color node and just get sort of a bit of a darker color inside the crevices to see how that looks. And I've just connected that with the crevices mask and already, Although it's very, very simple, just using that mask has already given me so much detail. It's looking a little bit flat and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna change that later on, but just something like that, the subtlety that it gives rather than a flat color is so much more interesting than just the plain blue that I had before. So I'm just using some ref to have a look at all the crevice sections I've got there in that turtle. And I'm just gonna try blurring out a little bit because I'm noticing on the ref, it's actually quite soft. So I'm just gonna try a gaussian blur by copying that mask to a paint node and then just gaussian blurring it to see how that how that looks. Might be too much, I'm pretty sure it is, but it's always good to just test these things as you go. And I think that's probably another thing to stress actually. I think I mentioned it when we were talking about sculpting, but with texturing as well, this asset was as much of a journey as the sculpt was. I didn't really know the direction I completely wanted to go with it. I had the concept of Squirtle and I know what a Squirtle looks like in the anime, but making a realistic version of that, I didn't know what characteristics from the real world I was gonna keep and what I was gonna keep from the concept. So this does go through many iterations and I think it's really important to try stuff out and if it doesn't work, then change it. And if it does, who knows, maybe you get, as Bob Ross would say, a really happy accident and you would end up with something that you really, really enjoy. So I do recommend just giving different things a go and you'll usually learn some new things even if you don't keep what you try out. So again, I've just popped down another radio node and I've referenced the edge mask this time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm try, gonna try baking that again and probably apply another Gaussian blur filter just to see how it looks. And you can see I'm using a lighter color on the edge just as if it was a little bit of wear to the side of all these scales and all of the detail that the curvature map is picking up. It's way too light at the moment, but it, as you can see, it's already built up quite a lot of detail. And I think actually blurring this out is doing a bit of a disservice because I do think that there is some really, really nice kind of crisp detail in there. But 
hey ho, it's not too much. The crevice map I really, really blurred out because I was seeing that a lot in the reference. But the the edge map here, I think that's looking really, really nice. So yeah, I'm going to try darkening that. Just try some other colors, see what I do think works. And this is definitely a lot nicer than that pure white I had to begin with. So now that I'm quite happy with that, I can start looking at some other details. So what I'm doing here is before I've put all this curvature detail down, I'm going to merge in a tiled node. And this way I can just add a little bit of breakup to the base color that's going over all of the skin at the moment. So I'm just trying some of these substance procedurals. And what I'm going to do is just find a nice scale for it and then layer this over ever so slightly this base blue color that I've got. So I'm going to try the multiply mode just to darken it all out a little bit. And you'll see that now I get some of these dots kind of just breaking up the texture detail of that surface. It's essentially a little bit much, but the great thing about this is because it's all kind of a procedural workflow is I can just go back and change that opacity as I go if I feel it's too much, as I'm doing here with the edge wear. And I'm not loving that texture, so all I need to do is just throw loads of different ones into that tiled texture and find one that I think does work. And I quite like those little dots that I'm getting there. I think that's a really nice, really nice detail there. Even if I do find a texture I like for a tiled texture, you'll often see me going through all the other different ones that I have in my image manager or my texture library, because often there is a better one, especially if you're looking for reference, it can be really easy to find something you like that doesn't actually really match the reference. So I'm just trying to find something that I think sits a bit nicer. This texture, I, I think I ended up using that one. I'm not entirely sure. It was something definitely with some drips. Oh yeah, this is the one here. It looks a little bit like bark, but I just quite liked that it's kind of got these striations in it and it just looks a little bit different. It doesn't just look like dots, like a purlin on top. It actually looks like there's kind of like drips and sort of scratches on the surface. So I think it just breaks up a little bit nicer than using something with just a few dots. That said, I do go back and add some dots to the skin a lot later on, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this one's quite nice. Obviously, I've got a seam on my UVs there, so I could try a triplanar as I'm going to do there. I've just right-clicked that image and I've made it into a triplanar. And then in that way, I can get rid of those UV seams because I've got one down the edge of my cheek. That said, I just felt like it got rid of the stripes. I don't know, this just looks a lot less fun. <laughs> That's not... Fun isn't necessarily a description for texturing, but I don't know, I'm just kind of losing that with the triplanar. So I can, what I can do is I can change the fall off of this triplanar to try and get some of those drips back in. This is the problem with a triplanar on something that isn't flat on the axes, especially this head, which is quite curved in places. Then what it's doing is it's doing weird merges between the three different axes that it's projecting through. So you can sometimes find that the texture just doesn't live up when you take it from tile texture to triplanar. So yeah, I'm just trying to fill in some of those gaps, make sure there's no bits that have got opacity to them. But I also don't want a really strong edge where it's fading between the X, Y, and Z projections. And so now I've got something, I've just hooked some basic values into all the other properties of the shader, like the roughness and stuff like that. And I've just put the color in and the normal map just to see how it's looking at the moment. And then I can play around with the lights inside of Mari turn some of them off, turn some of them on, just to see how this color is looking to begin with. I actually find, this is using the principal BRDF, I find that in terms of lighting, especially with normal maps, it's really, it's kind of piss poor. The Unreal shader is a lot nicer, but for some reason I keep getting darker colors with it. So I sometimes just switch between the two of them just to see how things are looking. So I've got some nice base colors for the skin and it's kind of working, it's something I can start working with. But this shell, this white edge that I painted earlier, and I say painted, I just filled sections of the mesh. Uh, it's it's really harsh. You can see that line. And while Squirtle might look like that in the anime, that's not how animals look like in real life. So what I'm going to do is just using some of the brushes from the shelf. Um, I'm just playing around with some of those to try and break into this a bit, painting with black into the mask to break up this edge. So I'm not a huge one for brushes. I don't often make them myself. So you're going to see me just playing with a few different ones from the shelf. And I'm going to be mixing up the opacity and the flow, two really important brush properties when it comes to painting masks, especially with this, because I wanted to, I want it to be soft, but I also do want a little bit of detail in there. So I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to break it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back over with some brushes that have got a little bit more hardness to them and a little bit more texture detail. So I still have some sort of detail in there because I think this is quite an important feature of Squirtle. So yeah, I really want to make sure that I nail this and not just have, like at the moment, it's just looking a bit soft and cloudy. So I'm going to go in with something a little bit more dotty, a little bit more of a hard 
texture detail to it after I've got this soft edge breakup now. So using this one in the shelf, then what I can do is just switching between black and white, I can eat away into the mask and also add more whiteness into the darker shell bit. You can just see me doing that. Make sure the opacity is kind of low. Um, yeah, I think this worked a little bit nicer than just that soft version that I had to begin with. And obviously I'm gonna lay out up a lot more detail on top of this shell. So if this mask isn't perfect, then it's fine. There is gonna be other features and I'm gonna add the curvature and the crevice mask to the shell as well as the skin. But for now, I just wanna get a nice mask here. So you can see that I went over that quite a few times and I'm often zooming out just to see how it looks from far away, checking all the angles. And now I'm just gonna play with that color a little bit more. To begin with, it was just using the color straight from the concept but um, I'm actually gonna use something with a bit more hue that matches the front of the shell. So there's a bit more kind of cohesion between the colors rather than just using something white and desaturated. So just with a little bit more warmth to it now. Uh, copy those radio transmitters, which are bringing over my curvature and my edge map from the backdrop with all my masks inside of it. And I'm just gonna add those now onto the shell just by using some color nodes with those as masks to add a little bit of detail to my shell. But since this color is going everywhere because this curvature map is everywhere, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply over black in the areas that I don't want it, which is on the skin because this area is just for the shell. So now we're going to get into some slightly more complicated mask creation by merging over different aspects and getting some quite complex masks started. So to begin with, I'm just using a couple of nodes, but we are going to get to some really, really complex masks. So I've just gone back down to my mask backdrop, which is where I'm putting all my masks together and I'm making a new black paint node. And all I'm gonna do inside of that is I'm gonna fill it with white on the shell. So here I'm just setting up a radio transmitter so I can access that anywhere I need to in my scene. So all I'm gonna do is select the shell section and fill that with white by right clicking and going to fill. And now all I can do is just reference that radio node wherever I need it. And then I can just multiply that on top of the crevice mask, on top of the edge mask. And then these color nodes that I've made will only change the color of my shell, which is exactly what I want them to do. I just want to drive my shell color with these nodes. So yeah, quite a basic mask. And we can see here how it's working just by setting the, the node to multiply, then only my shell color is changing. Quite a simple mask, but I will get to some really complex one later on where I'm using a lot of different merges and in that way, you can kind of set up some really interesting things. So instead of just a Perlin noise or instead of just this and that for your mask, you can merge together two different noises of different frequencies or add some hand painted detail with some procedurals. And it just really helps speed up your workflow and make things look a little bit more broken up and not completely CG and fake. So yeah, masks are amazing. They're really, really useful, especially creating complex mask stacks. And so there you could just see me playing with the levels on the mask for the shell edge, just to see if I can get something a little bit nicer there. And I'm just gonna play with the color of this shell because I'm not quite feeling it at the moment. And this is gonna happen a lot throughout this video. When I start adding other details onto it, then things are gonna change because you're starting to stack different details on top of them. So their color and the way you perceive them changes. So that shell, I'm not completely feeling it with the darker and the lighter color on top. So what I can do is just edit that. And that's the great thing about using color nodes to begin with is you can change everything on the fly. And that's why I like to start with them because especially the color of this changes a lot. So now I'm gonna do a similar thing to what I did on the skin in that I'm gonna add a tile texture on top just to break it up a little bit. And I'm trying the same one that I had before and just seeing how that looks. And often like I was talking about experimenting with colors, I'll often experiment with blend modes. So that I started with multiply, but I actually felt that this shell should be lighter. The details should add to it rather than multiply. So I changed that to add, and then I can just play around with the opacity amount as well and see how that all looks. And again, just going back to that shell, rebalancing it now that I've got that tile texture on top, just make it pop a little bit more. So I've got some basic blocked in colors using fairly procedural methods, but I'm gonna expand this skin section and I'm gonna pop down another bit of detail. This time I'm gonna hand paint a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up some sort of zonal color variation. I'm noticing on the reference, often the back of the head is a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna pop down a color node, pop down an empty mask that's just black for now, 
and I'm gonna start painting on the skin areas. However, at the moment, because the shell is there, then anywhere that I paint, it might kind of block bits. So what I'm gonna do is just select all the bits that I want this on and I'm gonna hide everything else just by going to selection, hide unselected. Cool, now I've got just the bits I wanna paint on and the shell isn't gonna intersect anything. So I can now paint into that paint mask. And yeah, now I can get some zonal kind of color variation there. Great, so I'm using a really soft brush again, as you can see, and I've got a really, really low opacity, so it just sort of builds up, and it is a really soft transition from the lighter color to the darker, and I'm just gonna block that in into some areas. I know I changed this mask multiple times. I feel like at points, the eyes feel like they've got a bit of mascara on them, but this is the great thing about working with masks, and it's kind of non-destructive, so I can just go back in and change that if I need to. And I'm gonna do exactly the same with a lighter color now as well, pop down on the paint mask, and start painting some bits that I want to be a little bit lighter. So on the beak, the beak is gonna be a whole section by itself, but for now I'm just adding a little bit of lighter color there and just trying to get a little bit of variation on some of these scales as well. Looking at this now, I think this color is actually coming off as a little bit gray, but it is what it is. And I'm just trying there to get a little bit of variation on the scales, so as if these scales have got a changing on them, because I noticed that's in the ref. And I try some other ways to do this later on, successfully and unsuccessfully. But just trying to bring out a little bit of the shape of some of these scales. This is actually one brush I use all the time. I think it's called like Storm Cloud or something, and just learn the opacity with this, I find I get really nice results. So final thing, I'm gonna add down a merge node using another color node and let's block in the beak. This is something I actually change at the very end. I start with a really dark color and then when I started doing some test renders, I found it just wasn't working. So I end up bringing it up to a sort of lighter blue so that it's still a bit dark on the skin, but it matches tonally with that. So here you can see me using almost it's like dark browny gray and that does change towards the end just because it felt a little bit too disjointed from the rest of it, but I had to step away to see that when I was working on it. I was like, yeah, that really works, but um, maybe not as much as I thought at the time. And this is why showing other people your work, showing your friends your work, showing and if you're studying, anybody else on your course, whatever, or if you're part of the Discord that I've made, showing people on there can be really, really useful. And that's actually where I showed it. I was like, hey, here's my work. And some people were like, I'm not sure about the beak. And I was like, actually, you know what? Now that you've said that, I completely agree. Um, but often it takes a second pair of eyes or you just need to take some time away from your work to recognize that. So yeah, that's gonna close out this video. I'm just gonna play with these masks a little bit for the last 30 seconds of this. In the next video, I'm gonna go through adding more color details inside of Mari. And yeah, I think this is a really solid base. I've got block in, I've got colors I feel are working. Granted, I changed some of them later on, but yeah, it's just really nice to see this. Um, and it was quite reassuring for me. I was like, oh, I actually think I have something here. So yeah, join me in the next part where I add a few more details inside of Mari and we really get this color map sort of popping. Cool. See you there, guys. So yeah, that was the 10th part of this video series. The link is below if you want to watch more of it. If not, hopefully you got something out of it. Cool, yeah, all right. <laughs> not much more to say than that, I guess. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Bye.